Hey, what's up guys? Nick Quintero here. And today I'm going to show you how to make apparel CADs using Adobe Illustrator. All right, let's go. All right, so I want to start this video off by saying straight up, I did not go to school for graphic design and I especially did not go to fashion school, which is normally where you would learn to make CADs using Adobe Illustrator. The only thing is that I have worked in the apparel industry for nearly 20 years now. I'm 31 years old. So I've kind of come up with ways to do things on my own. But in the time that I've worked in the apparel industry, I've worked with a lot of people who did go to fashion school. Are you going to be mad if I throw shade at fashion school because you went to fashion school? and I've used their files and their CADs that they've created. And I've seen things that I believe to be the way that people are taught how to make them because I've seen a lot of the same structure in their files and just the overall general style of how they're made. Now, I assume that there's probably some reasons that they're taught to do things these certain ways, which I'm going to talk about, but I also run into a lot of problems whenever I use other people's CADs. I just want to show how I do them. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with the way that other people are doing them. I've come up with ways that I can make my CADs so they're the most like versatile and I can use them for whatever kind of projects that I need. Let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so I'm gonna start with this image of this hoodie from H&M, and this is what I'm gonna build my CAD off of. Now I'm gonna show you some of the things that I've seen in other people's CADs when they're delivered to me, and also why I don't really like them, but I'll do that at the end of this video. I'm just gonna show you how I make them from start to finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock my layer with my image on it, and I'm gonna go ahead and make this new layer so that I can draw my actual flats. So I'm gonna pick a color that stands out. I'm gonna go ahead and use this magenta and press Shift X so that it swaps and becomes my stroke. And I'm just gonna start with some of the details. I'm not gonna trace over this um, tag, this woven label here, but I will go ahead and do drawstring. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time making these elements perfect, but if you're doing this project to send to a client or something that you're planning on showing on your website or something, you could spend a little bit more time on these details. And actually, looking at this one, I'm already finding something that I want to change. So there is a little bit of a slot here, and I can not, I guess I can kind of see it now. It's going kind of the opposite way, but I want to make sure that I'm representing this exactly how I want my apparel item to look. And if I want to replicate this little slot here, I need to include it in my drawing. All right, so now that I have my drawstrings drawn here, their basic uh, overall shape of the string, I'm actually gonna go ahead and select them both and press D. And what this will do is take my color palette to the default black and white setting here. And I do this because I want to be able to draw solid objects without having intersecting imagery. And I'll show you what I mean. First, I'm gonna go ahead and use the rectangle tool. I want to be able to use command and the left bracket to move these tips behind these strings. Now I'm gonna go ahead and group each one of these pieces individually. And that is the basic drawstring there. And you can see that if I have them both selected, they're two separate shapes, but they overlap and I do not see the image where they overlap. Kind of basic, but it's a little important when you're doing CADs. I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna go back to my magenta or when I'm drawing and editing things, and I'm gonna go ahead and draw this overall hood shape here. And you can see that I am just doing the outline of the whole shape because I want this to be one big element that I can edit further after I've created this shape. So here's the general outline. And obviously it's in separate pieces, so I'm going to use the shape builder to create those different pieces. So I'm actually gonna start my drawing out here on this edge for this side of the hood. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw all the way outside around this. If you saw one of my previous videos, 
You saw me do this when I use the shape builder. Select both of these images and I press shift M to select my shape builder. And then I'm gonna hold option or alt on PC and just draw across this outside path and it's gonna disappear. I'm gonna do the same thing for this piece and I'm gonna select all of these pink lines and I'm gonna use, here, let's go ahead and select them all. I'm gonna use the shape builder once more. I'm gonna hold option to delete the outside piece and on these two pieces, they're not connected. So I'm gonna deselect, I'm gonna select all of that again, press Shift M, and then I'm gonna go ahead and combine these two pieces by drawing over them. So now I have three separate pieces here, but I still have a couple more shapes that I wanna do. I'm not really going to concern myself with this kind of like overlapping piece, and I'm just gonna draw a shape that's the back of this hood and I'm actually just gonna do that with my pencil. And I'm going to make sure that I go all the way out, connect the whole shape, select all of the pink outlines, and then use my shape builder once again. So I'm gonna connect these two pieces because they need to be together. Same here. And then I'm actually going to connect all of this in here. Hold option and erase the outside part. And then I'm gonna click in this middle part that I did not draw on because that's how you make sure that it commits itself to being one of the shapes and not just knocked out. I select all of these pink pieces. I can press D again and it will select my default color palette to make these pieces black and white. Then I can use command left bracket to push them behind the drawstrings. Now I've got the hood and these drawstring pieces. This is where my method really differs from the pieces that I've seen before. So a lot of CADs that I've received from other artists, they don't use these solid objects, which is totally fine because I'm not gonna use them in the end either. But what they will do is they will create a separate layer for each piece. So the drawstrings will be on their own layer, the hood will be on its own layer, the bodice, the sleeves, etc. But the way that I like to do it is to continue to use the shape builder so that I don't need to put these things on different layers. And it really helps me when I'm doing my color blocking for the for the panels like swatches later. I'm gonna go ahead and select all of this and I'm gonna use my shape builder once again. And I'm gonna connect these drawstring pieces here and I'm gonna connect these pieces here on these tips as well. So now you'll see that those background pieces went away and these tips are their own pieces of art. So every single object that you see here is its own piece of art that knocks out of the other pieces of art. So they're all solid shapes and they're all individual. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my magenta stroke here and I'm gonna go ahead and draw this bodice. I kind of forgot I wasn't making it perfect for a second. Let's just make a quick outline. Most of the time, these images are drawn from sketches anyway, so there's a lot of leeway whenever you're creating all of these shapes here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and use my pencil tool so that I can draw this bottom rib piece. But again, I'm gonna make sure that it's a solid shape. So when I select these two and use the Pathfinder, there's nothing unexpected that happens. All right, I'm gonna draw another shape for this kangaroo pocket. And I'm going to do the same thing for these sleeves. And again, I'm just using the pencil tool, so it's much rougher than when I drew the hood, but this will speed up my process for this tutorial. Some of my seams may not match if I do this, but I can, I can worry about that later. Let's connect this so that it's a solid shape. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw these shapes on the sleeve ribs. And you can see they're all overlapping and they look kind of crazy when you're just seeing these outlines. But in the end, this makes my workflow super fast. So I prefer to do it this way. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and lock this hood and drawstring grouping here. 
Actually, let's go ahead and group it. And then I'm gonna press Command-2 so that it's all locked and I cannot touch it. Then I'm gonna do Command-A to select all and I'm gonna pick up all these pink or magenta lines here. And this is where I'm gonna start using the Shape Builder again. So press Shift-M. And for sure we know we wanna get rid of these outside shapes. And then we definitely want to merge these inside bodice pieces. I'm gonna merge these sleeve like cuffs as well as this cuff on the bottom of the main body. I'm gonna zoom in to make sure that there's some pieces here that I can get. Like this sleeve, this part of the sleeve needs to connect and this part goes right here with this rib. And then same over here, connect those. And then I believe there's a tiny little piece of the rib right here. You see that little triangle right there? I'm just gonna make sure that it connects. All right, so I think that is the general shape here. I'm gonna go ahead and press Command Option 2. And uh, Option is Alt on PC. So anytime I say Option, and if you're on a PC, just use Alt. All right, so now I will take my body or my hood group up here press command shift right bracket so that it comes all the way to the front and I'm going to go ahead and press D with all of these magenta pieces selected and I'm going to go ahead and hide my layer one so we only see what we're working with here. so now if I select these select all with command a you'll see that these things here are good and separate on the bottom but these top ones still need to be connected. So I'm gonna press Shift M for my Shape Builder tool once again, and I'm gonna connect this side of the hood, this inside piece, and this side of the hood. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click on my bodice, click on my drawstring and its little point there, and the same thing on this side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and confirm that they are all separate pieces by selecting these and changing the color. I'm gonna change it to yellow. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna move this little tip out. And yes, if it drops to white, that means that there's no detail behind it. So this one did not quite catch. And it appears that my illustrator just crashed. My illustrator crashed. All right, I think we survived. It seems to have Auto recovered everything. Let's go ahead and make it yellow again. This was a, ooh, that's green. This was a nice little lesson. I'm pressing Command S because we should always save our work. I'm going to title this hoodie.ai and begin saving constantly because I don't know what went wrong. Okay, I'm gonna zoom back in and I'm gonna move these guys here and you can see that it did not save once I did all of my shape builder. So I'm gonna go ahead and press Shift M and start tapping on these solid pieces to make sure that they are connected as their own shapes. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click on every single piece individually just to ensure we don't miss anything. So now if I zoom back in and move this, you can see that they are all knocked out of each other. And that's exactly what I want. And now this is the general idea of making a CAD in Illustrator. You know, you've got your separate shapes, you've got outlines and you can see everything clearly. But sometimes you've got to dive a little bit deeper and add in like stitching and things. So that way you can call out those specific sort of um, pieces in your manufacturing process. So let's go ahead and add some stitching. So first I'm going to grab this whole object here with command A and I'm going to press um, the slash key, the, the one that's on the question mark, and it'll basically make my front color transparent. And now I can see through. So I'm going to turn my original image back on and we're gonna find where the stitches are and maybe some other details. So this is where I agree with the CADs and files that I received from other artists and in where you would want to make a new layer for the stitching. So I'm gonna press this little plus button here. Whoa, only supposed to be once. I'm going to change the name to stitching 
And I'm actually just gonna go ahead and lock this layer here with the outlines for now because I don't need it at the moment. So on my stitching layer, I'm gonna find where there are seams and actually, to be honest, and if I'm being transparent, this one right here is not necessarily just stitching, that's an actual seam on the shoulder. So I should have created this as its own piece as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that by drawing another shape the same way I did everything else. Selecting this, pressing Shift M, deleting the outside, merging these inside points here, and then tapping on each of these to make sure that they are one shape. And you can see there's something a little bit weird happening here, so I'm gonna grab it all again, press Shift M, I'm gonna go ahead and draw over these two pieces to connect them. All right, so now these should all be completely separate parts. Let's do the other side. Select all, Command A, press Shift M for my Shape Builder tool, Hold Option to delete the outside point, and connect these two, connect these two, and let's zoom in and make sure we didn't mess anything up or find anything weird. Now, I know some of these pieces are not really connecting which is a little bit weird. That was just because I drew these so rough and I did not take the time to line anything up. So when you're making your drawings, if this is super important, just make sure that whenever you draw your shapes, you line them up perfectly. Let's get back into these stitching points. I'm gonna lock that, go back up to my stitching. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my magenta color just so that I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna find these areas where there is stitching and I'm going to draw it in. You can do this several different ways. Some people make brushes for the specific stitching. Like if you have uh, an exact pattern or something that you need to uh, mimic, you can make a brush or you can probably even find those brushes and download them for free. Or if you did go to fashion school, you probably got them from school already. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna do the most simple like stitch lines by drawing a line and then coming into my stroke options and checking this box right here that says dashed line. Now this dash is way too big. The default is 12 points and it's really kind of confusing. I don't, it's just way too big. So I usually change mine from 12 to three or maybe even four depending on the size of my document. And then I'll change the caps to rounded and the corners to rounded. And you can see that it creates this little faux stitch here. And I think I actually am gonna turn it back down to three. Now you'll see that there's a lot of um, spaces here. And basically what this is, is allowing you to create an offset pattern so that you can adjust the amount of space between the first and second dash and all the way up to the third one, I believe. So I'll just show you what I mean here. So if I want my gap to be larger between these two, I can actually also set that to three points. And actually, I think maybe the default is the same as the previous one. So let's change it to five points so we can see the difference. So now there's a much bigger gap between each of these. But if, let's say I want a smaller one, I can make that two points. So now there's three point dash, with a two point gap. And I think that looks much more like the stitch that I'm going for. Copy and paste this stitch so that I can have two running here side by side. Change that to black and I'm gonna go ahead and group those. Now, you can see that it overlaps where this piece should be above it. So what I'm gonna do for that is actually select my stitches, press C for the scissors tool. I'm gonna select the scissors tool so I can click on these points here and actually break these lines apart so I can select them and delete them individually so that my stitch goes behind my drawstring here. All right, now I'm gonna draw my drawstrings, I mean my stitch lines and copy them so that they're doubled. There's probably... And there is another line here on the inside of the hood, but I also saw another seam. So let's go ahead and fix that on the other layer after I create this double stitch. All right, I believe 
believe that is every stitch and seam that I will need for this hoodie template here. So let's go ahead and make this hoodie something easy to see, like a medium tone gray. So now this swatch here, I deleted the stroke so there's no outline on it and it's just filled with gray and it's placed under this outlines layer so that way you can still see your outlines. You can also change their stroke width or their color or anything super easily now because they're on a separate layer. So now I'm just gonna grab each one of these pieces. So now if I turn off the stitching and the outline layer, you can see all these flat pieces have been colored gray and they're all individual shapes in Illustrator that you can change the colors of if you need to color block it or if you just need to make changes in general, you've got two separate layers to make these edits. I'm gonna go ahead and say um, these drawstring pieces need to be white. So I'm gonna select them individually with my direct selection tool and I'm gonna color them white. So let's say I wanna make my bodice here a heather gray. I can actually just do that with a gray swatch. And then if I wanna make my sleeves black, we'll do the same thing here. Or for the sake of being able to see it, let's say dark gray. I'm gonna go ahead and group my left arm and group my right arm. And then I'm gonna group both of those arms together so that I can change them together separately easily. All right, let's change this bottom rib to that same dark gray. And let's change this pocket to this heather gray. And then let's dress our hood. So this seam right here that's on the top of the shoulder is gonna split the front and the back. But I want my front and my back of my bodice to be the same colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and select both of those. And I'm going to group them. And I'm gonna eye drop the heather gray. So now the front and the back of my garment are the same color, the same fabric. Now I'm going to grab this inside piece because this is technically the back collar here. And I'm going to eye drop that with the heather gray as well. And I'm gonna grab my hoodie pieces. I'm gonna cut and use Command B to paste in back. I'm gonna group those and I'm gonna eye drop them the same color as the sleeves. And now I have all of these pieces separated out into their own elements as color swatches that I can change as easily as I ever could. Like if I wanna change this hood here, I can just grab it and I can make it navy and now I've got a whole new different colorway. All right guys, that's it. This is the quickest and easiest way that I have found to make an apparel CAD using Adobe Illustrator. Like I said, it may not be the right way, but it's definitely the best way that I've found because it makes me have the ability to make changes quickly and group things and use them all together without disrupting the files that have outlines on them so that I can quickly grab them and use the eyedropper without changing the stroke weight or color or transparency or any of those other problems that I've run into so many times in the past. If you guys got lost at any point in this Illustrator tutorial, it's probably because I was using tools that I've already gone over in previous tutorials. So please consider subscribing to my channel to get access to all of my tutorials, everything that I've already taught you guys how to do in Illustrator before this video. If this is the kind of content that you guys like seeing, please consider hitting that little like button down on the bottom. It helps me out tremendously. It helps YouTube know that this is a good quality video and that it should show it to more people who would get value from it. And don't forget, you can hit the little bell down there to get notifications every time I release a new video so that you don't miss out on anything. If you guys wanna see some of my day-to-day -day content, you can follow me on Instagram, at NickQ, and my TikTok, at NickQ83. All right, guys, that's it for this one. I appreciate the support. Let me know if you wanna see more videos like this. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. That's it for this one. And like always, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.